Vivek, at any moment, we could see Gavin Newsom, Gretchen Whitmer, maybe Kamala Harris, we're told she's at the governor meeting, walk to that microphone and what we think will be support for Joe Biden, but who knows? You know, my question to you, is this, you know, checking in with the president or is this really kind of a wellness check? Vivek Ramaswamy had an interesting reaction to the current state of Joe Biden and all of this speculation over replacing him. So with that said, be sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and let's just get right into this. Look, I think that the reality is the managerial class around Biden has lost their use for him. This has been obvious to me since last year. Play out the incentives. He is not the strongest candidate they can put up. And these people, they have stopped at nothing to keep Donald J. Trump out of office. You think they're going to stop at this step? I think it's actually one different game they're playing, Kaylee, is they want this to happen as late as possible into the cycle. They want it to be in the honeymoon phase of a new candidate. Initially, you get that honeymoon phase before the scrutiny comes. If that swap out comes in August or even after August, they get to put up a candidate who will not yet have had the scrutiny, keep Republicans guessing. And that's, I think, the game that's actually going on here. And the reality is, I think there's only two viable choices, really, if you think about it. The Democratic Party is wedded to identity politics. The only reason Kamala Harris got that job, frankly, is because she was a black woman. Don't take my words, take it from the words of the Democratic Party itself, which leaves Kamala Harris or Michelle Obama. That's where I predict this plot ends, and I don't think it's gonna happen particularly soon. I think it's in their incentive to wait as long as possible, and that's exactly where I think the game goes from here. Interesting. So first of all, Vivek is right about the honeymoon phase, and this would be a strength of nominating someone like Gavin Newsom or Gretchen Whitmer for the Democrats, because I know a lot of people say, well, we'll be fine. I mean, we can beat them anyway. They're both horrible governors, right? And that is true, and I think in a long enough campaign cycle, the insincerities of of Newsom and Whitmer would be exposed, but if they sort of substituted Newsom in last minute, you know, a lot of Americans, especially in the political center, are not necessarily familiar with Gavin Newsom or Gretchen Whitmer to a large degree. And so immediately they're going to be a little more popular. And then over time, that popularity will decrease. But hey, if you kind of throw in the candidate there last minute, it takes a long time to really tarnish their name and explain to the American people why they're about candidate. So that part is true. I think the other part that is pretty accurate, though, is that the replacement of, say, a Newsom or a Whitmer is actually, in my opinion, and I've said this before, unlikely to happen largely, firstly, because of the DNC party rules and all of that, right? If, if Biden wants to step aside, the easiest thing for them to do right now, logistically, is going to be to just substitute the VP in. I've heard recently, I believe that Biden's campaign funds could not go to, say, a Newsom or a Whitmer, but they could go to a Kamala Harris because she's already on the ticket. So that's an issue they might have. But I think, again, the big biggest problem they might run into is the woke politics, right? The intersectionality and diversity rules of the Democrat Party. How exactly would they justify to their base that you have this black woman, quote unquote, vice president, and keep in mind, the VP is supposed to be the person who takes over after the president. Uh, so she's next in line. If Biden steps down, they're going to usurp her authority. She's the one who's supposed to get the decision, both based on diversity rules and the actual merit and hierarchy itself. But instead, we're going to run a white guy or a white woman because they are more electable. I mean, how would they justify that? And I know, don't get me wrong. They are power hungry. They probably know intrinsically Kamala herself is not that electable either. And so maybe they do want to put a Newsom or Whitmer and they'll find some type of stupid excuse. But I still think you got to imagine, how are you going to justify that to the Democratic delegates? Because let's keep this in mind. As much as we want to say all of the Washington elites, Ron Klain, all these people are just going to substitute him in. It still has to go through the DNC. And who are the Democrat delegates? You're talking about state party officials. You're talking about activists in some cases. You also have to justify to these people who in some ways represent the Democratic base to vote for, say, a Gavin Newsom at the convention if they do end up replacing Biden, which I will reiterate is possible, but I don't know if it's necessarily guaranteed either. But just a couple of thoughts right there. So August and you name two individuals. 
levels. In the meantime, we need to know what's going on with our country. Troops have died overseas. That phone does ring at 3 a.m., and I don't know that Biden's answering, and we need answers. No, he's Do not. Do you believe that Congress should use their oversight authority to subpoena whomever they can? I don't know if they can do this with current administration. They can certainly do it with former administration officials. Should there be congressional subpoenas to see if KJP is correct that nothing has been hidden from us? Look, I think we should use every toolkit in our arsenal right now. Every leader in Washington, D.C. has a heightened obligation now more than ever because we have a president of the United States who is absent. Forget the election this year, even aside from the election. Just speaking as an American, Kaylee, Americans deserve an answer to the question of who is actually running the country. It is clear after that abysmal debate performance, it isn't Biden. Point. But that's a worrisome concern at a moment when we are facing some of the greatest risks we have faced in a generation right here in our own homeland. Yes, are there parallels to LBJ in 68? Of course there are. There was a war that we shouldn't have been in, in an era of global instability. You see that in some cases in multiple times over, not only around the world, but in the risks we face right here at home. Now is not a moment for us to have a commander in chief whose seat is functionally vacant. And so should congressmen or anybody else in DC doing everything in their power to secure our country in this time of absence at the top? Absolutely is the answer. Well, we That's a uh, important point and interesting suggestion that they made there about the subpoenas because I too am curious who exactly is running the country. If you want my answer, I think it's always been the case that it's basically just Democratic staffers, the Washington entrenched bureaucracy, et cetera, et cetera. They're the ones writing these bills, coming up with the ideas, guiding Joe Biden, whatever. I know that a lot of conservatives like to say they think it's Obama, you know, Obama secretly running behind the scenes. But regardless of who you think it really is, don't the American people have a right to know that because I don't think Biden is making a single solitary decision. And yes, part of the reason perhaps there is so much speculation from the media and some of the Democratic elite right now about replacing Joe Biden, whether or not it will be possible, is because yes, in many ways, Joe Biden was once useful to the permanent class in Washington, because obviously he has been there for 50 some odd years. He already knew all the people. That's why in 2020, when he started beating Bernie Sanders, they said, we'll all get behind him because we want Trump out of office, obviously. So in that regard, he did his job. And yes, for the past four years, he's been a pretty effective puppet for Ron Klain and all of these characters. But now that Biden is such a catastrophe, and now that it's looking very strongly like he has collapsed and he's going to lose to Trump, yes, it's an interesting question. Where do the loyalties now of the Washington elite necessarily lie? Are they going to try to still push Biden over the finish line? Or will we see something to the contrary? Because I have heard reports that Biden and his family are thinking of firing a lot of their current advisors and basically just listening to each other. You know, it's reported that Joe is taking more advice from Jill Biden as well as Hunter Biden, which is a funny concept to think about. You know, <laughs> Hunter Biden is the one really making decisions at the Oval Office. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous, but that's what we've been told. So I don't know. With that said, folks, let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comment section down below. What do you think the current future is of Joe Biden? Do you agree with Vivek? Let me know. And until next time, be sure to leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And until next time, Alpha Moves Only. God bless. Have a very great rest of your day and peace.